it's so uh, flexible. There's so much you can do with it, and it's like the easiest, most basic tool in the world. Um, tons of command line switches, most of which are not available in ZenMap, uh, to do very specific things. I use Nmap, I don't know, at least 30% of the time when I'm doing a network pen test. A lot, a lot, a lot, because I want to know what's going on. And I can narrow it down to very specific things that I want to see and that I don't have to fire up a big Nessus scan to find out because MAP can do a lot of those really kind of sniper targeted testing, excuse me. Um, and it can do a lot of Voln checks now too. So lots of Voln plugins that are written for that. NSC scripts, um, which are written in Lua, which is cool. It's pretty readable, pretty human readable. Um, so, I mean, easy things. You're going to use a browser for things you would, unspeakable things you would never think you would have used a browser for before. Not in that way, in a security way. Um, Nessus, Python, um, learn, learn a programming language, a scripting language. Learn how to get something done quickly and, and dirty. Uh, something you need, if you need to iterate over a list or um, do something very specific to a specific service, there may not be a tool for that. So you may have to s roll your own, right? And Python, uh, Ruby, Perl's terrible. Either one of those is a great option for, for doing things like that. Don't ever learn Perl. I put on this list because if you do, it's okay, but I hate it. Um, general things like Linux, uh, Telnet, Netcat. Netcat is one of the coolest things in the world. Play with it, learn it. Um, I'm not obviously going, learning these things and demoing these things is beyond the scope of this, this talk, but um, SQL map, Anyway, there's just a couple of tools. There's a couple of tools I use on every single engagement without exception. Nmap, Nessus, Python, Linux, of course. Uh, Burp, does anybody know what Burp Suite is in here? Awesome. Burps, there's no excuse for not knowing Burp Suite because the core of it's free. And you can do a ton of stuff with the free version of Burp. You can't do some automated scanning and you can't do some automated testing, but um, that's okay. You can learn the majority of it, the parts that matter, um, on a non-automated scale without buying it. And if you have to buy it, or if you can get your employer to buy it, even better, it's not that expensive. It's like 250, 300 bucks a seat. Compared to, uh, Nessus is like, I think they're 2,500, 2,700, something like that. Um, and then of course you can pay for like IBM AppScan or one of those other crazy tools and they're in the five digits, which I don't even use those, to be honest. I've never used them. So Burp Suite, for those of you who don't know, is the application for breaking web applications. It's written in um, Java, which, by the way, Java is terrible. Um, literally the worst programming language in the world. But, <laughs> he's mad. Um, <laughs> for me, remember I have biases? These are just all my opinions. Uh, except it's really the worst. But, I love people that write things in Java because then I can use them. Uh, and it works in everything. Same jar file that works in Linux is the same one used in Windows. is the same one that you use in whatever, Mac, everything. So that part of it I like. Uh, don't ever learn it. Okay. All right. So your new hobby is now security all the time. Like you should be quizzing your significant others. Hey, what's on port 443? What's on port 22? You should be learning all of these things that um, that you just have to get to up to speed on. And the more you can do this, the better off you'll be and the more you'll signal to your employer in an interview, hey, this person knows what they're doing. They can speak the language. Um, they may have a practical test for you. That's where your labs that you've done come into play. We're gonna talk about those as well. Um, but first five years of your career is going to, you're not gonna have any other hobbies. Don't do drones, don't do BMX bikes, don't do cars, you're just doing security. You got, there is some time to be put in here. There is a ton of stuff to learn, especially if you're lacking a little bit on the IT background. I, basic knowledge of IT infrastructure, how things work on the back end, how a server works, how a web server works, database server, um, how those communicate with each other, how you can, um, <coughs> basic networking, uh, having things in a protected zone that talk to a DMZ, all of those things, basic architectures, you have to know all of those things. So you don't get out of, uh, even though we decided, right, I, we decided RT, IT is too easy, right? It's too easy for us because we want security. You still have to know all that stuff. In, I think a decent security person should be able to do a job swap with an IT person anytime. 
they should be able to call the security department in a large company and say, hey, we need a guy in IT for, or a, or a gal in IT for two weeks starting tomorrow. You should be able to go and fill that role. That's how well you should know basic IT. Um, so there's a lot of stuff. There's all the IT stuff plus all the security stuff. Okay, all of it. Eat, sleep, breathe. Again, IT stuff's prereq for sure. Um, I mentioned learn to program, uh, except for Perl and Java. <laughs> JK. We can still be friends, right? <laughs> Give him one of these. So I don't, that's not a good sign. Okay, uh, do some labs, right? If there's a new phone, especially if it has a name, this is, <laughs> apparently this is now the yardstick. If the phone has a name, go learn about it, because it will have a, leb, a website too, right? Because instantly it's going to be by the domain, and now we're naming them, and now they can be in the news, and anyway. Um, but that's all happening, which is great, I guess. <laughs> it's weird. Um, but find out about it. If something dropped last night, and it's an O-Day, or it's uh, um, like MS-17010, uh, right? Or it was the 18... 17010, which is SMBV1, right? The problem. Uh, if that came out last night, you should be today, after work, if that's when you have time, set up a VM, figure out how to attack it, use the, use the proof of concept. Does anybody, does anybody know what a proof of concept is? Proof of, proof of concept code? So that's just the exploit somebody wrote and they released it, which is awesome because it's usually source code. We can go through it and read it as long as it's not Perl or Java or something stupid like that. Usually it's something cool like Python or Perl, um, and it's pretty readable. You can go through, look at how it works, modify it, attack your own stuff, figure it out. It's not going to work, probably. There's a lot of proof of concept code. Now I'm going to forget the website. Somebody help me out. It's the main repository for all proof, for most proof, proof of concept code. Sorry, exploit DB. That's right. So that exploit DB has a lot of uh, that's kind of the main dumping ground for code other than paste bin, of course. Uh, that's where it kind of gets archived. It may not be the latest and greatest, um, but you can just grab code off there for any specific bone, modify it, make it work against your target. Um, and it's not, that sounds difficult, right? It sounds like you already need to know how to program. It's not necessarily true. Swapping IP addresses, you can do that, right? If you can read, you can do that. If you can send an email, you can do that. Compile it. You may have to install a library or two. Again, if you're not using Perl or Java, you'll be fine. Um, <laughs> just kidding. And, um, but just mess with the stuff. That's, that's, I can't tell you how many things, first of all, how little I learned in my undergrad. Second, how many things I taught myself because I thought, hey, this is happening over here. Why is this happening? Why is this a problem? Why is SMB, SMBV1 garbage? Why, is, um, why does MS-08067 exist, right? Why can I shoot one payload from Metasploit to a computer and automatically like, have system access on it? Why does that work? That shouldn't work. Who designed this stuff? But that's, that's how we have to learn stuff. There isn't really a, um, I don't know. You, in a decent security program, you will learn some of that stuff, but you also learn a lot of theory. Theory is not going to help you do a pen test most of the time. It helps to understand things that are happening under the covers, but just knowing how exploits work in general is more helpful, in my opinion. Okay, do some certs. Take some tests. If you're bad at tests, get better at tests. Um, are these good water? Can I steal one? Thank you. Hey, this is there for me. Nice, not for you guys. Just kidding, I saw a fridge out there with Mountain Dew. That is awesome. Everybody go get a Mountain Dew after this talk. Um, cert, some certs are hard. Some certs are not as hard. And it's going to depend. Some of it will depend on if you're a good test taker, right? That's tough. Um, if you're not, you're going to have to improve because you'll probably need a couple of these. Um, and pick one to start with that you're maybe already halfway there. Okay? If you already have a good IT background, um, take like the Security Plus is going to be a small step forward. Or if you're already good at networking, take a networking cert. Even, a ne even IT certs will help you. Um, and then learn best practice. Basically, everything in, in the security world is based on best practice. There is no, well, there's a couple of guidelines, right? ISO 27001 is a guideline. P2000 
people like to use PCI as a guideline, but they're not universal rules. If you're not subject to specific things, so if, you're, if your company doesn't provide um, something as a service, then you may not have to have a SOC 2 report, right, or assessment or audit, which means you probably, you don't necessarily have to um, adhere to those specific rules. Um, it's good to grab, if you're at a company and they don't have any kind of guidelines, grab a framework, learn it, implement it. Um, but the more you know about just what is best practice, the better off you're going to be. And you can Google security best practice, information security best practice, and there's going to be a lot of them. If you can know a couple of those frameworks, like 27001, PCI is not, not, a great, um, not great for that. Uh, there's others as well. If you know those and you're interviewing and they say, well, what do you know about you know, security best practice? You could say, well, in 27001, blah, 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 and you know, throw that out. And that's a signal, hey, this person has done some homework. They understand some of these best practices. Um, and most of the best practices, once you've been in security a little bit, are pretty... Um, uh, self-explanatory and pretty obvious. Were any of you in here for um, Pope's Thinking Like a Hacker talk a little while ago? Anyway, he talked about um, disabling local admin, right? Which is a great best practice. Um, and some, some, um, uh, some frameworks will say, hey, this is part of this. If you want to get this, this certification or this audit or a SOC 2 or whatever, you have to do these things. Um, but the company you work for may not be subject to any of those rules by legislation or by law, which is great, sort of, except you don't, have, you don't have a big enough stick to swing maybe, but you can at least appeal to logic and say, hey, let's do this so we're better as a company, so we don't, as Pope talked about, um, crypto locker, we don't have to spend thousands of dollars to bad guy hackers, right? And then just start interviewing. If you don't think you're good enough to get a job, who cares? Um, interviews are terrible. The only thing worse than interviews are presenting at a security conference. Um, they're uncomfortable. They're like some, some person across the desk is judging your professional skill set, basically, right? And I put a lot of self-worth in what I can do as a professional. So if I don't get that job, sometimes that you know, makes me feel a little bit sad. Like that guy when I made fun of Java. Um, but the more you do it, the more thick your skin will grow, and then you'll realize this person isn't rejecting me as a human, they're just rejecting me as a good fit for this role. Um, and there's no, there's no limit to interviewing. You can interview, I have a, I have a brother-in-law and he interviewed, he has, he has like a CEO position at some, I don't know, water company or something. He interviews like twice a year. He doesn't want to change jobs. He just does it so he stays sharp. Um, but you can interview. If you can get into an interview, great. They've already decided that your resume passes some bar, right, that will get you to sit down with another human, which is a thing. That's an accomplishment. And if it's a role you think you're not ready for, in the interview say, hey, you list this and this uh, as required skills. This part of it, I'm a little soft on. I'd rather have somebody admit to me that, that say, hey, I don't know I'm not an expert in network security. I'm really good at application security. I can break web, web applications pretty, pretty well. I'm good at that. I've done that a lot. But I'm really, I'm really light on the network side or the system side. I'd appreciate somebody telling me that as opposed to trying to fuzz their way through it, right? Um, so anyway, I'm not saying change jobs all the time, but definitely uh, interviewing can help you. And the part that's lame is that it's unpleasant. So... Anyway, all right, so now we have a job. Congratulations, you're analyst one. But the beauty is you're not going to be analyst one for long because you've gained all this newfound knowledge because after work you've gone home and put the time in. You woke up and you read about any kind of volumes. You went on dark reading and all the blogs that, um, information security blogs and read all the, uh, information security superstars Twitter feeds and they're and you figured all those things out and you set up labs and you're you're spending time to figure out all these things so you're not going to be in your entry-level position for very long um, 
Now, this is going to sound like the cart before the horse a little bit um, to innovate and solve problems, but that's where I think most people fall down, is as soon as you know enough about a topic, you can start to change how it's done. You can start to change how, um, if you're internal for a company, how things work, right? Every company has inefficiencies. Um, sometimes there are, th there are reasons why certain tasks are done a certain way, but you're new. So you can look and say, hey, we do this by, you know, looking at this first and then evaluating this over here, but what if we started over here and it's, and it's more efficient? Uh, employers or bosses love people that solve problems for them. Okay? Um, and this isn't security specific. This is just how to be awesome at work, right? Um, this, is, this is something you can probably do at a, at a smaller organization over a larger organization. If you are at EY out of, uh, out of your bachelor's and you um, do something very specific like do vulnerability scanning and that's all you do, this is going to be tougher to do. Um, but not impossible. Uh, and if you can do this, you're going to have to find ways to step out of your job description, right? You're going to have to say, hey, I've already finished all this stuff you gave me because I'm awesome, and I did it maybe a little bit better than the other person did it, and now, you know, I have, this, I have an extra hour at the end of the day. Can I help somebody else do this thing that I'm really interested in? I finished running these vulnerability scans for the pen test team that's going out this weekend. Can I help, uh, you know... Sarah over here with looking at this web application because I, I don't know that much about that. Employers love that stuff. If, you can, if your boss is forward thinking, they'll, they'll allow that kind of thing. Now, again, I don't know um, how easy this is to do in a large organization. It's probably easier to do in a smaller organization. And for sure easy to do if you're an external um, party, if you're an auditor or a consultant. This is the stuff we love because if I, if I have slow down, if I've got a pen test work for three, guys, three people and I have um, four people and one of them's on the bench, I'd love to be able to plug them in somewhere else. So cross training I think is a buzzword for that, um, but you may have to initiate that. There may not be a function in place or a mechanism in place to make that happen for you, but that's how you, I would just go to your boss and say, hey, I want to do this. See what they say. What are they going to say? No. You already did a bunch of interviewing. They say no all the time, right? Okay, you already presented at a security conference and nobody said anything from the crowd, right? I mean, that's, it's easy. You have thick skin now. Just kidding, you guys have been pretty, pretty uh, interactive so far. Appreciate that. Okay, so we talked about that a little bit already. Make your boss's job easy. I love it when my, my team makes my job easy. If I can slack them and say, hey, what's going on here? Oh, it's already done it in the report. Haven't you looked at it yet, idiot? Yeah, I would love for somebody to tell me that. Then I go do it and then deliver the report and I'm done. My job's easy. Um, be nice. Be nice to everybody. Be nice to boys. Be nice to girls. Be nice to dogs. Be nice to everybody at work, okay? That's easy. That's easy to do. So, um, anyway, I'm not going to explain on that because that's easy. And don't get cocky. This, I think, is probably one of the bigger issues in the security industry, especially kind of among the top tier. They, and maybe they're not this way. I only know a few personally. Some are, some aren't. But they come off really proud. I can do all these things. Look at me go. Okay. You can't. You can. You can do some stuff. That's cool. Look at all these other things I can do that you can't do. I can make awesome scrambled eggs. Can you do that? No. Oh, well, then you're garbage then, right? I mean, there's always somebody that knows more than you. There's always somebody that's faster than you. I learned that in race cars. There's always somebody that can do something better than you can. Just stay humble. Just be nice. And you'll get a lot of mileage out of that. All right. We talk, I talked about this a little bit. So um, different sizes of organizations. Again, there's advantages and disadvantages to both, okay? So an advantage to a smaller org is you have, well, this is a double-edged sword too, a bigger role probably, okay? You may be, if it's a really small company, you may be security person and IT person. Not great on separation of duties front, but sometimes that's how it is. 
Um, might be more work, but also, if this is your job right out of your undergrad, it's kind of a win, because if you're light on the IT, you'll pick it up. If you're light on the security side, you'll pick it up, because now you've got to do both. Okay? And if, you, and if you skimp in either side, you could be in trouble. If things go down, you could be in trouble, right? If things go down because you were hacked, you may be out of a job, but better luck next time. Um, so you will have a little bit more latitude for exploration in a smaller org because some of that cross-training will probably be easier to do, even though you'll have to initiate it. If you're in a bigger org, they may have mechanisms for that already. Um, but you may have to empty the garbage, right? There may be some things that you ha have to do that you don't want to do, but whatever. This is work, right? You're getting paid. You sold eight hours of your day so you can eat. That's, that's the reality of life. Okay, or there is larger orgs, um, like, uh, are we still at big four? Are we down to big three yet? I don't know. But you can work for a big accounting firm, right? They do all these things, too. They have their own IT staff and pen testers and stuff. I'm not equating Big Four to E Corp. Just kidding. Um, a lot of people start their career this way, and it's not a bad way to start, especially if you want to be a consultant. Um, if uh, the Big Four, they recruit uh, people right out of college, which is great. It's great for them. You can get some experience. Make sure you get the role you want because you may not be able to change your role without leaving the company. Sometimes that's a reality. Um, they, the upside is they do have well defined paths forward, right? If you put in your five years, you can now be, I don't know, junior manager or whatever the org chart says. Um, so you know where you can go and when you can go there for the most part if you're good. If you're not good, be better. Um, but again, rigid roles, you may be the person that is running Vuln scans. That's your job. You run them, you interpret them, you take that data, you do something else with it, and you do that all day. Not super fun, doesn't sound super fun to me, but, um, but again, you'll become an expert in that, and there are people that have a whole career doing that, their whole career, and that's what they do. We're talking about pen testing, but there's also all kinds of offshoot careers that you'll find once you're out there and working and doing that kind of thing. Okay, so you have some, some access to more money, right? More money means probably more time, hopefully, um, more training opportunities, probably, uh, the little, the little smaller companies, you may have to bend some arms to try and get some training money, which is important because, right, we're still building our career. Um, get to a SANS training if you can. They're expensive, but they're incredible. Um, get to smaller trainings. Go to conferences like this. Um, so, yeah. All right. So now we're sort of working. We're okay. We're feeding everyone, including ourselves, which is good. Maybe you bought a new car, which you should, because cars are awesome. Um, but now we need to move into the next phase, okay? So, again, it's another cycle. Does this look familiar? It's one of the earlier slides. You need more skills, or you need to dive deeper down the skill set you've already developed. Either one is fine. It depends on what your goals are. If your goals are to be able to lead pen test engagements, and um, be able to answer any questions that can, you may have a team of five people and you uh, fly to New York to do pen test a specific company. You're now sitting in a hotel, the six of you, trying to figure out how you're going to attack this company either you know physically or um, socially or uh, through a technical attack. Um, you'll probably have some rules of engagement that will limit what you can do, what you can't do. For the most part, uh, we don't get to do the thing at the beginning where I just walked into a data room. That's usually out of scope because we can get in most of the time. I've never not gotten in. Um, but uh, now you have this team of six and you have to answer all their questions. So if, you're, if, if that's your goal, if you want to lead this team, you need a pretty wide breadth. Maybe, not, maybe you don't need to know the um, specific string to escalate your privilege on a um, MS SQL Server from, uh, you know, once you have a time-based attack sorted out and maybe you don't remember the syntax off the top of your head. Maybe that's not the job you're going for. That sounds terrible to me, right? That's not, that's not really my gig. Um, now, do I know what tools and where to find that information to be able to do that? Yeah. Um, 
but I may not have it off the top of my head. So it depends on if you, wanna, if you really want to be specific to one single thing. If you want to be the best web application pen tester in the world, you can do that. Ignore everything else and dive deep into that one channel. You may not know right now what is super interesting to you. I'm only starting to figure out what things are super interesting to me at this point. Um, but you'll find that your career will start to lead you down paths that some are attractive and some are less attractive. Gravitate towards the ones that are more attractive. If your employer doesn't give you the latitude, change employers. You're not married to them, they're not married to you. You owe them your eight hours a day, they owe you your paycheck at the end of two weeks. That's it. That is your relationship. Okay? We don't, uh, in, depending on where you work, we don't do pensions really anymore. We have 401ks. The beauty of that is you take your retirement anywhere you go. Right? So if you're not happy where you are, however unpleasant it may be to change and to make a change, especially if you have to relocate, that's unpleasant as well, uh, do it if it means furthering your career and it works for your family. Um, don't, don't, don't be afraid of it. Um, I think that you'll find that your career will, uh, will suffer if you are. Just make sure you're making good choices there. Um, eventually, maybe a graduate degree makes sense for you. It made sense for me uh, mainly because I wanted um, a little more validation. I wanted, to, I wanted to do the research portion. When you're an undergrad, you don't really do research, right? You learn things. You go to classes. You take tests. In a graduate degree, you may do, uh, depending on the degree, some are similar to bachelor's, but um, you may be able to do some original research, which is sweet, right? You have... Um, my specific degree, I had three semesters of classes and then a semester of research where I authored a paper. I actually spoke on it at 2016, St. Con. Um, if it sounds super interesting, you can go check it out. It was about um, uh, home automation networking, uh, not Wi-Fi like RF networking and security, that kind of thing. But uh, that, was, that was actually super fun. The class part was fine. But I really enjoyed doing the research. I had to author a paper. It was, I don't know, 40, 50 pages, something like that. Um, sounds painful a little bit on the surface, but it was really cool. At the end of it, I actually deleted probably 10 pages because I had too much content. So um, that may make sense, make sense to you at some point. Uh, they can be expensive. If you have an employer, they may match. They may, may cover your tuition or match or do something to help you out there because you're going to be more valuable to them with an advanced degree. Program stuff. Write stuff. Um, I don't think uh, programming, taking a class on programming is super helpful, but guess what it is? Writing an application. If I have goals that I want to achieve and there's nothing out there that does it now or does it poorly, write an application that does it. You'll learn real quick how stuff works, how frameworks work, that kind of thing. Um, I think we're running out here, so I'm just going to blow through some of those. So we, they we're picking locks in the class before this. Attend concert, conferences. Concerts are good, too. Um, step out. So it, on the uh, locks, physical, RFID, when we got the call to do a physical pen test on a company for the first time, I didn't panic. I just said, oh, these are skills that I've acquired after hours on my own. So I'm not worried about this. We'll just go walk on site and do it. We didn't need to hire another um, outside party to come do contract that part of it for us. We just did it. That wasn't ever part of what I needed to do for work before then. I thought it was interesting, so I figured out how to do it. Um, uh, yeah. So just continue on. Continue on with what the early, um, earlier slides were talking about. Now, you may have noticed that the presentation started out pretty heavy, ended a little bit lighter. The reason for that is because that's how... You need, this, you need a little bit of a start now to figure out where to go with your career. Everyone does, right, when you're starting out. But once you get going, probably five years in, you've identified a lot of places that are interesting to you, maybe five or ten. I can't tell you what those are now because they're unique to you. I can only tell you how to start to find those, and then you can start to dig down those, those paths. And if you have to go down a path for a year, and you say, I th this isn't what I thought it was, and you need to back up and go back down another path that started back there, that's okay. 
Uh, don't be afraid to have a little bit of wasted time. In a, if, if, you've, if you've already wasted it, it's gone. It's fine. But don't waste more time going a direction you're not comfortable with, you don't like, you're not interested in. Okay? Some days at work will not be interesting. Spoiler alert, anybody who doesn't have a job in here, which I'm sure most of you do, some days at work aren't awesome. Okay? But overall, in the, over the course of a quarter, two quarters, or a year, you should generally like what you're doing, like especially what we're doing. Okay? Information security has negative unemployment. What that means is they can't put enough butts in seats to do what they want to do. That's great for us because that means good wages, it means availability, it means uh, upward mobility, it means that we'll be able to find work, find good careers, and you shouldn't waste time in a, in a portion of this that you don't enjoy. Okay? If you have a goal, identify how long you need to be in this role to achieve that goal, and once you've achieved it, if it's not going anywhere, if there's no upward mobility, move. Change employers. There are a lot of employers in Utah, enough big ones and small ones, Typically, you don't have to relocate out of state or maybe even relocate where you're currently living. So um, Utah wasn't always that big, especially in tech, especially I'm, 20 years ago, it wasn't that big, I don't think. Um, but it is now, which is nice. We don't have to go to California to work. It's perfect. I hate California. I grew up there. It's terrible. Just kidding. It's nice to visit. Um, all right. Thank you.